Saw wet owls are one of the smallest owls in North America, and they happen to migrate past Indiana Dunes State Park. And Brad Baumgartner, who is the interpretive naturalist here at the mm -hmm. State Park, has been banding saw wets for a number of years, and we are at the banding station right now. We are, yeah. Welcome to basically the middle of nowhere in Indiana <laughs> Dunes State Park. We are far away from any of the roads or campers, yeah. and actually in our, our banding site right now, where we actually do a lot of the work uh, this time of year. Okay, and we're kind of surrounded by some nets, and we're surrounded by some apparatus, which we're going to talk about in just mm -hmm. a minute. But let me ask you, the reason that you try to band this time of year is mm -hmm. because they are migrating, right? Yeah, we're looking at a, a migrating owl, as you mentioned, one of the, the smallest in North America. And here we're looking at a bird that from a tail to head is like eight inches. Yeah. So this is a, a pretty tiny owl that's migrating through and in numbers that, that few people realize are, are actually coming through here. It's a bird that a lot of folks have never heard of. Mm -hmm. And it's a bird a lot of bird watchers have never even seen before too. Right. Right. So it's a, a big thrill for them to be able to see something like this going on uh, here this time of year. That's exciting, okay. Let's talk a little bit about the setup because mm -hmm. obviously we're going to come back after dark. Yes, they are owls. <laughs> so they'll be flying at night. So it's going to be much harder to see. So we thought we'd start mm -hmm. here in the daylight and you can explain to us yeah. what the setup is. Yeah, actually right now, you know, we're here in the fall. This is the time that these uh, owls are migrating through. And we're part of a, a network called Project Owlnet. Mm -hmm. And uh, Project Owlnet's a loose association of about 100 different banding stations. Wow. And they all have situations just like this with these banding nets that are up right now. And then they open up at night and then we can kind of communicate with each other. And by having a group like this, we can also have set protocol. And by these protocol and standards allows us to compare the data that we might get ac across these different stations. Okay, excellent. All right. So are, can we actually see yeah, one of these nets? Yeah, what we see, we're in the middle of our net site, and we have a couple of different pieces of equipment that we're using. And the, the first one I'm going to show you is our nets that we use. Mm -hmm. And these are nets that we use to capture the owls. We call them mist nets. We use them for uh, the owls. We use them for other types of bird banding. And so right now, as we're out here and it's still daylight, mm -hmm. we see that it's all wrapped up. Okay. And we've furled this up. It's up high. This is to keep uh, you know, white-tailed deer and other animals that may be moving through here uh, not harmed by this net. No birds are going to fly into it, get tangled in. Right. So we're going to open it up right now. And the idea is that the birds can't see this fine netting. Is that right? They can't see it. Once we've opened this up, it's almost invisible. It's pretty hard for me to it's see it. It's hard to see yeah. it right well, now. In the daylight. And imagine at night, these things yeah. are not seen at all. And actually, mm -hmm. the bird actually then drops down in the little pocket that's yeah. What we're right? going to do is these trammels then help to create the pocket. And so imagine a migrating owl flying through here. He's going to come on in. He's going to actually hit this net, mm -hmm. and he's going to drop. And he'll fall right in this pocket. And he'll actually be kept inside there. Right. Uh, he'll get slightly tangled in there. He's not going to be injured at all in the process. Or then we can then open it up and be able to take him out back to the banding back site where we'll actually station. collect the data, put the bands on the bird, and let some folks see him that may be around. Okay. While it's still light, can we take a look at this yes. kind of contraption mm -hmm. over here? This kind of looks. Uh, you know, science fiction like, Brad. <laughs> if we, yeah, if we want to get an owl, we need to bring the owls in. Okay. And so one way that we're going to do that is with our audio lure. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing here is uh, we have a uh, basically a deep cell marine battery where we've hooked this into this box. It is hooked into a 300 watt amp and speaker and an MP3 player. Oh, yeah. And so we're going to hook this in here. And all I have to do is to plug this in, turn it on, That's all the sound that's they it. make, that's just it. that tooting yep. sound. That's great. And that's what we'll hear later this evening. Okay. All right. So the idea is now we're going to wait till dark, mm -hmm. and then we're going to uh, come out and actually see if any of the owls have gotten caught in the nets so that you can retrieve them and ban them. Absolutely. Yeah. Every hour we'll come out here, we'll check the nets, we'll look for an owl, and bring them back to get some uh, data on them. Of course, there's no guarantee that we'll actually net an owl. Never. But you know what? Part of the excitement is just coming out here in the yep. dark with our headlamps and see what we can find. Yep, we'll see what we can find. All right, sounds good. Great. Well, we didn't actually net a saw wet owl on that net run, but we are back inside the Nature Center here at Indiana Dunes State Park. And Brad, you've got all of the equipment that's used once you actually capture an owl. Yeah, I have a lot of the banding stuff we're using right here. Uh, a lot of the equipment we have, uh, such as some of these bird bands, uh, we have because we're licensed banders. We have the federal state permits that allow us to do these. Uh, these are wild birds. And so uh, a lot of stuff here that we're going to measure and take some of the data uh, on these owls with tonight.
Okay. All right. So let's say you have a bird in your hand. What are some of the yep, first things? Yep. We got an owl here. Uh, one of the things we're going to do, of course, we're going to put a band on it. Mm -hmm. And so we have different sizes made for each foot. They have a different number on there. And believe it or not, little solid owl would actually fit. Uh, his foot was would fit right amazing. inside that little band. Yeah. So we use special pliers that we're going to use that will then uh, open and close on his foot. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to take uh, some measurements on the bird. And so just uh, this is my ruler. It's going to measure in millimeters. We'll measure the wing. We're going to measure the tail on that bird. Okay. We're going to weigh the bird also. And that's where we'll use, uh, I got a little digital scale here. The bird won't sit on there. Uh, maybe they're <laughs> too weight conscious. So uh, right. we're going to put them in the cup. And uh -huh. so they'll go in the cup. We'll actually be able to get a weight on that bird. We'll measure it in grams, record that down. And I'll, we'll take uh, other measurements. We might be using calipers. And here maybe measuring the beak. Mm. And a portion of the beak from the nostril we call the colman. So we'll actually measure the colman, measure that in millimeters as well. And then finally, I can actually look at the age of that owl. And we're going to actually use a black light for that. Mm. And so that's where I got the little portable one. And I can actually pass that wing over. And I can look at the different color pigments. And some of the pigments will turn bright pink on, on certain feathers. Yeah. And so I think it's really amazing how they ever figured that out. Yeah, really. And uh, I guess it goes back to the, the old hippie days is my <laughs> best guess. But uh, we can look at that and we can tell the age of the bird. I can take these measurements that we took and we can actually uh, assign it a uh, male or female too. And all of that data then is recorded. The sex, the weight, the, all of that. Everything all that will get recorded. We'll mm -hmm. go to the bird banding laboratory in Maryland. And if you find a bird, uh, whether a solid owl or anything with one of these bands on it, you can go to reportband.gov and you can also uh, get information all about that bird that you found. And that reminds me that here at Indiana Dunes State Park, you actually do public programs where people can come in on nights that you yeah. are doing saw wet so, banding. More than just owls, we do uh, banding of a lot of different songbirds uh, right out of our feeders. We have bird banding demonstrations. You can come uh, anytime we're doing that, about once a month, and see us. And we're using different size bands here for some of the different birds. I got some smaller chickadee bands, yeah. maybe some bigger nuthatch woodpecker bands, and so you can get a chance to see a lot of these birds uh, up close. And that, that's the really neat part about it. And the best way for folks to find out when those are coming up? We have an interpretive schedule. You can uh, find that on the web, on the DNR website, or you can go to the Indiana Dunes State Park Facebook page, okay. and we have a lot of the updates there as well. Fabulous. Well, Brad, thank you so mm -hmm. much. No problem. I know you and the volunteers We'll be headed out later tonight. We will. See if you can get an owl or two. Mm -hmm. Keep your fingers crossed. Yep. Good luck and thanks for sharing Thank with you. us. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Well, I hope you enjoyed exploring fins and feathers. On the Outdoor Elements webpage, you can download a goldfinch fact sheet. I'm Evie Kirkwood from St. Joseph County Parks, and remember, you can find your own outdoor elements when you visit area parks and nature centers. We'll see you next time. Outdoor Elements is presented in partnership with the St. Joseph County Parks Department, regional parks with natural fun, St. Patrick's County Park, Ferretti Bago Creek County Park, Bendix Woods County Park, and the Spicer Lake Nature Preserve. Elements is made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.